Run, river, run, run through the hills. Run, river, run to the sea. Run, river, run to your place beneath the sun. Run, river, run over me. Hi, welcome to my guest. This is Jan Lewis, and uh, today we have from the Uxbridge Senior Center. We have the director, uh, Marsha Petrillo. And then the other topic of our, of our show is going to be great too, the trip coordinator for the Silver Club of Uxbridge, Sue LaRoe. Now we're not favoring any senior centers that I was sharing today. We're trying to feature many senior centers. We have our own here in Upton. If you're watching from out of town, out of state, we have a lot of them around here. And, we, and everybody has a different flavor and they offer different things. And uh, before we begin, I want to give a shout out to my good friend Barbara Burke and Barbara is one of the most avid fans of this program. She watches it three times a day, and sometimes if she didn't catch it the first, she'll watch it again the next. She has become like my fashion coordinator, and this woman will let me know. Barbara, thank you so much. Shout out to you. She'll let me know what colors are really good, and mm, but uh, we love her dearly. We're going to have her back on the show. She's a historian here in Upton, Massachusetts, and we welcome her all the time. Now, ladies, I don't know who to start with. For who would like to start first to talk about what's going on with you? Well, Marsha, would you like to talk director, about the Oxford sure. Senior Center, all the goings on? Sure. And we want to mention Gail Boudier. She is the outreach coordinator, and I know Gail from way back when our sons were growing up over in Whitensville. Gail is sitting off stage. She's very much with us right now. So go ahead, Marsha. Tell us about what's going on over there. Sure. Well, I like to think of our Senior Center as the little engine that could. We're um, on the east side of the tracks, in right in the heart of the downtown Oxbridge on Route 122. Yeah. It, uh, the Senior Center used to be a little garage just to give you a little historical yeah, they background. they grew up a lot, didn't they? Yes, yeah. yeah. It was a little garage, and back in the day, that Blackstone Valley students and uh, Representative uh, Richard Moore converted it to our current senior center. Mm -hmm. So we've been in that location for about 30 years. Um, the Expert Senior Center has changed over the years. Most recently, we acquired a new parking lot. We have a new fire station right across the street. Um, so. We have a little grassy space now, and we're we've developed a, a, a nice welcoming front uh, entrance. I remember when it was <coughs> wow in the '90s. It was kind of small. Yes, and it's grown. Well, we're still th the same square footage, mm -hmm. so it looks different. It's a challenge sometimes yeah. to to um, offer a lot of recreational programs, Jan. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to think of us as a full serv uh, human service type of senior center. Um, we do, uh, this time of year, a lot of fuel assistance um, applications. We're gearing up for um, uh, working with AARP and tax returns, free tax returns, with, a, with an emphasis on this uh, senior center circuit breaker, senior circuit breaker, which is um, kind of a well-kept secret, so we want to always uh, announce that there are programs for seniors uh, through the state of Massachusetts that help uh, reduce your uh, real estate taxes and it's called the circuit breaker tax credit and through the months of February and April you can come to the Uxbridge Senior Center and many of the senior centers throughout the valley mm -hmm. to have your real uh, income tax is done and even if you don't have to file for um, a return or, or a, um, a check from the state you can fill out what's known as a CB1 form and perhaps get up to $1,000 back. And this program is designed to um, help offset your real estate tax bill. So basically, in a nutshell, um, mm. if your income is, um, if 10% if of your income has to go towards your real estate tax bill and your water and sewer bill, yeah. you would qualify. So it's a good program. Try I to hadn't heard of it. Yeah, I really know so many seniors that unfortunately are eligible for this return. And they don't know. And they don't <coughs> know about it. They probably think it's just, if, if they did know, they think it was just for very low income, but it's right. not. No, right. it really isn't. And if you're a homeowner, if you rent, it's 25%. If 25% of your rent yeah. um, uh, goes towards paying um, your uh, utility bills, you could qualify for a rebate from the state. Wow. So it's worth looking into. And yeah. I always say if each one could reach one, maybe we could get this benefit flowing into more households. 
So call us about that in yeah. February. Uh, call your local senior center to mm -hmm. see if you qualify. And uh, don't pay $300 mm -hmm. to get your taxes done. No. So the, all the different local senior centers, which we're trying to, there's no favoritism yes. here. All the different local senior centers can help with that. That's right. So it's not just a particular one. It's all of them. That's right. That's right. And so I think, do who do we thank over in the government for this? Well, AARP helps train volunteers yeah. that come in and they're certified. And I don't know all the inner workings, but I can find out more information about that. But it's a state program that uh, Richard Moore, our, our uh, former uh, senator, mm -hmm. helped put into place. Is it his son who has come up next? Are they related? I don't know if those the, it's the most confusing thing. In Worcester there's a there's a representative yeah, or a Moore. senator more yeah, as well. Yeah. I don't think they are related. I don't know. So it's wonderful. Yeah. So you have I've got thanks to Gail Bouvier. She's the outreach director over there. Okay. She does a wonderful it's called Mail for Gail. Mm -hmm. And can you tell us a little bit what's on coming up? Sure. So oh, um, is Gail great. is the outreach coordinator yeah. and she's been with us for about a year and a half now, going on two years. And you know, our outreach has evolved over the years as well. She helps us with our Facebook page. Sure. So she does a lot of outreach through Facebook. Yeah. She does a lot of telephone reassurance and she also does our newsletter which is um, promotes our program. That's a lot. It is a lot. It is a lot. And she does home visits and helps with transportation. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking to the left because she's over in the sidelines. So um, she's <laughs> she's a full-time employee, yeah. and we're very pleased to have her working with us. You're very lucky. Yes, Because I know Gail when she was, well, both of us, like little sons over in the Whitensville school system, we live right across the street. Yes. And it's, it's amazing how... What's to say? Time flies. Mm -hmm. You don't think you're ever going <coughs> to get to this stage in your life. It's, oh, that's way, way far away. But then suddenly your son is in their 20s, and maybe you have a couple little ones floating around, and you're like, oh, <laughs> it's like, bam, it just it hits you. Time Especially if it's real right. early, you know. Yes, it's true. Plus, Gail, if I can just say a little thing about it, too. Yes, Gail and Marsha work well together, and they're both very, very welcoming. When you go into the Uxbridge Senior Center, they're Right More, there. Yep, they're right there. They know everybody's names. Yep. If they don't, they make themselves, you know, yep. they they just introduce themselves. I've been there, too. They used to have pitch games going. To Do they still have pitch games? We don't have pitch. I we remember. have computer classes and Tai Chi classes, uh -huh. but okay. we no longer offer pitch. Um, it's not to say we won't ever offer <laughs> it again, but... My um, son's father loved, I think he loved pitch back and so I would go with him. I think that's where we played it. Yes. But my grandfather taught me real cutthroat pitch. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, there's no other place around here. I was probably the baby of this whole group when I walked in. But it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it is fun. So you have Tai Chi. Yes, as okay. a matter of fact, it's going on as we speak. Okay. And um, it's, it's a new class. Ron Allen is our instructor. He also teaches Tai Chi at Northbridge Senior Center yeah. on Thursdays at the Uxbridge Senior Center from 1.30 to 2.30, 1 to 2.30. 1 to 2.30. 1.30 to 2.30. Thank okay. you. And so everybody is welcome. It's free. Yeah. Uh, if you are able to give a donation, we certainly accept donations to help offset some of those costs. But it is free. So, this we, is so fun. we welcome you. This is great. Now, we have our other guest, too is Sue LaRoe, and she is the trip coordinator for Silver Club of Uxbridge. Right. I saw this advertised, I think it was maybe in the Men in Upton Town Crier. I'm not okay. sure, but I don't think I would have known any other way. What, this sounds wonderful, what, what happens with the trips? Okay, so the Silver Club is part, it's through the Uxbridge Senior Center, yeah. so it got, the, got its name because it's, the newsletter is the Silver Center News. Yeah. Oh, I'm thinking that's how the name evolved, and so it's called the Silver Club. Um, uh, so I've actually been doing trips now uh, since 2004. Mm -hmm. I started doing them with Faith Fellowship Church, and then kind of we had a little um, young at heart group. We would have lunches once a month, and then the current pastor that was there at the time left. And once he left, a lot of the parishioners left. So mm -hmm. we th there weren't enough people to y run the young heart group anymore. So I started doing it with the Oxford Senior Center, and before that. I had always welcomed other people anyway because there never were enough people just sure. to come just from the church. So yeah. I would always, you know, put it in the newspaper and try to get, because in order to make the trip go, yeah. you have to have at least 35 or 40 people. Sure. So, Do you go um, in that silver fox, big uh, buses, I see? <laughs> I can, what's in there? We do. I well, I do use different, but I use Foxy Travel a Foxy lot, tra and Foxy I also travel. Okay, and I also yeah. use Silver Fox once in a while too. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, Where do you go? Where are the? Oh, we go everywhere. <laughs> it's, yeah. I'm a lousy traveler, so if we go too far, count me out on anything too far. Yeah, no, we we have a good time. Um, 
Well, it started out, I would only do day trips. When I first started doing it, I only did like two day trips yeah. a year. Yeah. And now it's evolved into, you know, at least once a month, there's a, either a day trip or an overnight trip. I do a lot of two and three day trips. Um, I have a few coming up this fall still. There's one up to um, the White Mountain white mountains Ooh, in new hampshire so um, yeah, actually marsha yeah. and her husband and friends are going on that one um up near plymouth by a chance where i went to school up there oh you did yeah, uh, we're actually it's in whitefield new hampshire so we're going up to the mountain view grand it's a okay. it's a grand dame hotel it's a beautiful beautiful and the price hotel. is included in that you um, just go right there. yeah so for that trip it, it's like it's 419 and it includes um the you know the stay at the hotel the, sure. the bus of course and uh two buffet breakfasts, like huge buffet breakfasts that they do, mm-hmm. and then two dinners, um, full course dinners and everything. Then we're going to have a day in Vermont, just touring in Vermont. So we'll, we'll do a couple things on the way up in New Hampshire, yeah. uh, we'll take a few back roads, go by some covered bridges. Uh, we'll go to Vermont the next day. Cross right over. Go by some more co- the covered bridges. Go through <laughs> White River Junction. I know White River. Uh, that's a little south, I think. Cause okay. Whitefield, You'll New Hampshire, is pretty far north Perfect. in New Hampshire. So then it kind of, it, but it's on the almost on the New Vermont border. So mm-hmm. we'll go through Vermont. How long has this been going on? Your trips uh, since 2004, so 13 September. years. Yeah. Wow. But it's um, become more and more popular. Well, it's. Yeah, I mean, I, like I said, I do because I need to fill the bus. We open it up to everybody, and then, then it also like, like yesterday, I had a trip up to New Hampshire. We went up to the Turkey Train, so yeah. that's a trip that I do periodically. Like I was doing it every other year. The years that I didn't do it, people would always ask, when "What's you, a Turkey Train? When are you doing the Turkey Train again?" Yeah. <laughs> so it's called the Turkey Train. You go up to Meredith, New Hampshire. Yeah. There's a train ride along the lake, and Hart's Turkey Farm comes on the train and. Um, gives you a nice hot turkey dinner so Ooh. they they have they have oh. like little carts that keep the food hot and everything they carve the turkey right at your place and oh. give you a turkey dinner on the train so and it's you know usually we try to do it during foliage so it's always nice I know Gail Boudier would get a kick out of this when I was pregnant with my son I was deathly ill for th- three months but when I got better all I was living on was for a breakfast breakfast lunch and turkey with uh, stuffing and cranberry sandwiches oh, really? that went down real good with chocolate milk I love it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you're making me so hungry. And a lot of times, pe- you know, people have turkey Thanksgiving and Christmas, you know. And, yeah. But it's just always very, very popular. How so, many people fill um, in the bus down? Well, so in that trip, I ended up having a full bus. And it was like 53 people. 53? But, um, wow. But what I was going to say is, so, so when I go, when I do trips like that, so some people from the Oxford Senior Center, there's people from all other places, too, that come because I have people that have been coming on my trips for years and years since I started doing it. And... Um, but we always talk about other things that go on, and, and I always tell them how wonderful the lunches are at, at the Oxford Senior Center, because most of my people are, are seniors, yeah. and you know they might go to lunches other places and everything, sure. but, um, but the lunch in Uxbridge is like the best good. lunch That's of great. any of the senior centers around. Ooh, we're mean, getting a plug, there you go. No, really, it's yeah. for three, you know, it's <laughs> $3 or $5, yeah. you know. What do you get, what's your best favorite food? Well, the Fridays, is the Fridays is the big day, because everybody likes fish on Friday oh, yeah. so it's always um, beautiful fish dinner they yeah. the, the biggest thing with Oxbridge is that they do they don't have like the institutionalized food that most of the senior centers have they have their own chef so oh you have a chef so it's a yeah so it's it's really really good very cool it's does really he wear good. the hat Never well no it's Lynn it's like okay <laughs> she doesn't wear a hat but she's okay. very good <laughs> so it's all home cooked meals that's great that tastes really good how and long have you been with the, the trip up party since it began two thousand. well so 2014 mm-hmm. I was doing it with the church and then I don't even know what when it really kind of transitioned over um but I did it with the church at least I don't even know seven so how would people now we're going to get back to like you that. Marshall how do people get in touch um about the trip the uh, how would they reach you? Uh, so basically, right now, um, they would have to just call me at home, um, so uh, my home number. And then I do have uh, a Facebook page. There's a Facebook page that Gail helps me with <laughs> a lot of times because I don't know half the answers to how to put the things on there and everything. But the Facebook page does have um, most of the flyers. And then um, my home number is 508-476-5820 if anybody wanted to call me at home. Mm-hmm. And then um, the Facebook page is just under the Silver Club, so it's just called the Silver Club. So if, if anybody's on Facebook mm-hmm. and they just type in the Silver Club, um, they should come to that. Well, there's a couple of different Silver Clubs, but it's pretty easy to figure right, out. How do you put um, down? Here comes the big question. We got <coughs> baby boomers are a huge group, and it's I think the youngest ones are like 53, 54, and it goes up to like 70. It's a big group. Now, how do you? Is there a cutoff? You have to be a certain age. <laughs> no. Well, 
at the, when I used to do it for the church, the young at heart group itself was technically a 55 and older group. Yeah. But when I started doing it, I wasn't even I wasn't even yeah. 50 yet. I think I was 49. Or something. Yeah. I forget. So uh, and any, you did, you're right? But yeah. but I um, I wanted to start helping out at the church doing it. And the guy that was doing the trips at the time, at first there was one couple that did everything. They yeah. did the lunches, they cooked the food, they you know emceed the show they they did everything and they did the trips and so they asked me if i'd be interested in doing the trips yeah, and sure. so i said yeah i'll try it and it's really ironic because i was a dental hygienist for 41 years but when i was in high school mm -hmm. my guidance counselor at the time told me that i should do something in travel you yeah. know you do all those aptitude tests and right, it right. came out <sighs> to do something in travel yeah. i always like languages mm -hmm. so one of my reasons for being a hygienist was i wanted to go to switzerland and work for a year sure. which i ended up doing but then i I had already been working like 35 years, whatever it was, when I started doing the trips. And I, I, I say this all the time. I should have listened to Dr. Ballard. He, <laughs> he knew what he was talking about. <laughs> Even though I always loved being a hygienist, and right. I was very passionate about. So any you know, age, you have basically do any of them bring their grandchildren with them? And people do. I not very often. Most of my trips are during the week, so it does tend to. Um, attract uh, retired people okay. more yeah, yeah. but I have plenty like yesterday I had plenty of people that work but they yeah. just took a day but off they did to take go a day off? yeah oh. and and the overnights people take time off all the time so so I it, when I started doing trips it it was more you know I was around 50 and the other people a lot of people were 70 80s mm -hmm. some of them in their 90s sure. I, I did a trip down to Branson Missouri nine days I had a lady who was 95 on that trip sure. and another one that was like 90 yeah. so but just a kid <laughs> but now but now it seems like they're more like I'm finding a lot more just retired people yeah. that you know plenty of people that could go on their own sure. but but it's more fun they'd to go rather go with a group mm -hmm. you know Marsha how long have you been working as the director over there 15 years. 15 years. Yeah. What yeah. were you doing beforehand? I was the administrative assistant to the um, town manager in the town of Uxbridge. So okay. I've worked for the town of Uxbridge for about 23 years. Sue, were you from Uxbridge? No, I'm originally from Westboro, but I lived in Uxbridge for 23 years. It's such years. a tight area, you know, we all yeah. sort of, we are talking again with Marsha Petrillo, and she is the director of the Uxbridge Senior Center, and also Sue LaRoe. And she is the trip coordinator for the Silver Club of Uxbridge. Again, we're not playing favorites. We have a beautiful mm -hmm. Upton Center right down here. We're trying to get in all the different senior centers because I said in the beginning, they all have a different flavor. Some of them might have something different to offer. And it's cool. You can just go right. You can try them all. You can have fun at different mm -hmm. ones. I think it's great. Mm -hmm. And I think the more we do that, I think they're going to attract more of the Gen Xers and baby boomers in here because they're going to think, oh God, no, it's just, it was for my grandparents. Mm -hmm. It ain't that way so much mm -hmm. anymore and it's mm -hmm. becoming more up and coming. Nobody wants to just sit there and do their thought. Yeah. They want to do something fun. Yeah. So when were you, did you know the position was open or did you say, I want to go in there and work? Well, I knew that the former director was um, getting ready to retire yeah. and uh, I started volunteering actually teaching computer classes. So uh, that uh, led me to uh, have an opportunity to apply for the position. Yeah. Um, I had a little bit of background in town government and um, as it turned out I was very fortunate and I feel very blessed to work in my community and with my seniors uh, in the community yeah. so it's it's worked out well. What? How can they reach you Marsha? They can reach me at the Uxbridge Senior Center. My number is 508 Two seven eight eight six two two. That's my direct line and I'm there Monday through Friday from about 830 until mm -hmm. 5. So please call me anytime. One thing I really love about you. the senior centers is that they have a lot of, not all, but they have, a, I noticed that Uxbridge does, mm -hmm. speakers yes. that come in. And uh, I, I just made a, pr I'm a memoir ghost on writer, a ghost writer. I'm, I'm a, I do that for people. And ghost writer, in fact, I'm not the author of it. They're on their little book, they're listed. I'm the ghost writer. Mm -hmm. I write for them. Most people have their stories up here, but they can't get it down on paper. And that's where I come in. I did a presentation up in Framingham for the uh, brain injury support group. And there were quite a few seniors there, younger. It was all ages. So a speakers bureau, I think it's, it says community policing, but do you also have other speakers who come into yes. different you do? So let's talk about um, the community speakers bureau. What's really nice about that is our uh, chief of police, Jeff Flory, um, he's just an exceptional police chief. And he has taken an interest in us, and every first Friday of the month, he brings someone into the, uh, into the senior center. We try to gear all of our um, talks 
during our lunch program mm -hmm. because we have a big audience at that time. And we do use our cable access services in good. Uxbridge That's to good. promote that yeah. and so that we can extend the information out into the community and to the caregivers so that yeah. when, they're, when they're home, they can see the kind of information and, and what goes on at the senior center and how their parents or their loved ones participate. Mm -hmm. So um, our police chief um, is... Uh, in November mm -hmm. has invited um, Chief Lurie. Chief Lurie <laughs> has invited Ben Sherman, the director of the Public Works, to come back to speak to us. We have a big project um, mm -hmm. coming up in uh, the town of Uxbridge, and Ben is um, beginning to just educate all of us about how we get our water. Yeah. You know, we just take it for granted. We turn it on oh, our yeah. faucet and we don't understand <laughs> all the inner workings of the DBW. Sure. So one of the things the chief is trying to do is get uh, department heads to not only educate our community, but we we in turn educate one another. Sure. And we understand then better how we can answer questions about your water bill, for example, and what are those SIF charges and where did they come from and why is my water bill so high? <laughs> so it's a, it's an opportunity for everyone to learn. Um, and so that's very well attended on Fridays. We usually have a full house on Fridays. And mm -hmm. like Sue said, everybody likes the fish, Hannaford's. Um, we get all of our food from Hannaford's and um, Lynn cooks either salmon, fresh salmon, or... Oh, you're making me so uh, happy. Yeah, this is I killing me. I don't know about you, Kale, folks. but this is killing me. <laughs> so, yeah, last oh. Friday we had, um, we celebrated World Smile Day, and one of my volunteers on Fridays also mm -hmm. runs the community garden, plants a yeah. garden for us. Yeah. So she cultivates and harvests all the vegetables, and we incorporate them with our hot, healthy oh. meals every day. <laughs> so, so we good. honored her, um, and my friend Jean Daly, who's a, the chief's assistant, uh, she's also on me, um, the Uxbridge Elderly Connection, which is my 501c3 group. She does a lot of yeah. work behind the scenes on behalf of our senior centers. So sure. it was a fun time last Friday, and we look forward to having Ben um, next, fr next the first Friday. Is there ever, ever <coughs> a meetup between you, if this, you're the director of Uxbridge, are Upton, Northborough, all over the lot. Do they ever get together for a meeting, maybe once every six months, to kind of uh, learn from each other and compare notes? Well, I mean, every year <laughs> the MCOA offers a conference. It's a three-day yeah. conference, and that's an opportunity for everyone to uh, gather together from all over the state and oh, learn nice. and attend workshops. And yeah. I always leave there with my brain on fire, and it's it's really fun to go to. Yeah. Um, Gail um, attends some of the outreach coordinators sure, yeah. have gotten together every month or so, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a nice way to keep connected and to see what people are doing in, in other towns. Because like you said, every town has a different culture or kind of a, a different um, accent and uh, based on their space, based on, you know, maybe what uh, the interests of that town. And so some are more recreational in nature and some are more informational sure. and uh, <coughs> in nature. So we're trying to do a little bit of both. One of the other things that we're trying to do to attract baby boomers, Jan, And is the Gen Xers are very close. The, yes. <laughs> it's They're so getting 50 now. <laughs> That's true. They are. Is we offer what's known as the Senior Academy After Hours in an attempt to try to attract the younger uh, okay. individuals in town. Senior Academy. The Senior Academy. And Kathy Thornton has been taking the lead with that. She's a member of the Uxbridge Elderly Connection. We've offered Finding Your Roots. Local people bring forth their talents and offer these classes. So Barbara Hall offered uh, a course in genealogy. It's oh, a free yeah, class. Amazing. And she went on the computer and helped everybody kind of yeah. learn about their background. Um, um, we've offered photography classes, coloring classes. We've hosted coloring. Yeah. Oh, that's right up it's, my alley. It I is. I love it. Fun. I never outgrew it. Well, it's meditative, right? Oh, you yeah. can't really think oh. about too many things while you're coloring. I could be listening to a radio talk show and just. Yes, <laughs> it's very yeah. Yeah. soothing to, and um, it's something you can bring your grandchildren to. I oh, brought my yeah. grandchildren to the coloring class. There's a lot of those new coloring books out. And oh, the pencils and the <laughs> gel pens. And there's a lot yeah. of different mediums. So yeah. we had fun with that. Yeah. And uh, Kathy is um, a retired English teacher, and she uh, reads on audio journal. Um, and she also is thinking of we're getting our motion picture license so that we can offer classes in film yeah. and she wants to uh, offer that in the fall so yeah. stay tuned and, and please come and join us it's so usually offered in the early evening everything is wrapped up by eight mm -hmm. but just in, a, in an attempt to try to 
and some different people through our doors in the evening when it might be Marcia, more conducive. How can people reach you again? <coughs> it's 508-278-8622. Now, Sue, were you you weren't originally from the area? What were you doing before you you got in you became into the trip? Uh, well, I was a dental hygienist, and so I yeah, actually. Oh, that's right. You were so talking. even when I lived in Westboro, where I grew yeah, up, yeah. I actually worked in the Blackstone Valley back then. When I, fr okay. I first started work, that one of my first jobs was down here. Do you miss working so, as a hygienist? Um, <laughs> Uh -oh. hey, I don't know if I'd be uh -oh. one of these people's mouths. Hopefully my dentists aren't <laughs> watching. <laughs> <laughs> you don't miss it, right? Not really. You I, prefer the you trips. You know, I, that's exactly. I, yeah. I have much more fun doing bus <laughs> trips. <laughs> when I first started doing the bus trips, my husband said to me, why would you want to do that? People complain a lot about, you know, different things. I said, Dave, what do you think I do on a regular basis? Yeah. How many people do you know that like to get their teeth cleaned? Mm -hmm. You know, people oh. be like on the edge of their seat and, uh, you know, then yeah. it kind of makes you uptight. Yeah. So people love going on bus trips. It, you know, once in a while you do get people complaining. But for the what most part, do? we have a great time. People, so people ask me, <clears throat> and I've even wondered this too, when you get on that doggone bus, <laughs> now, I'm not that cool, what if someone needs to stop? I mean, you can't. Well, there's a there's a bathroom on the bus for one thing. Well, yeah, so but what if you, if, if you're you not a good long distance traveler like I am? Well, we stop there. <laughs> we stop every two hours. Like if we're gonna if we're going somewhere far, we stop at least every two hours. Mm -hmm. Can you get um, out and shop a little bit? Yeah, we mm -hmm. stop. We, we just stop at a rest area. For, you know, sometimes right. we stop for 20, 25 minutes. Other times we'll stop for lunch for an hour. Sometimes okay. an hour and a half. It depends okay. how much. Time Anybody we get have. a little bit car sick? But no, no most of the time good. they're yeah. Most of the time they're usually pretty good. If they do, they always request to sit in the front. But a lot yeah. of people take <laughs> a lot of people take um. You know, yeah. whatever those drugs are that they take out of their mouth. Dramamine. Dramamine. Some people will sit in the back and take that because they like to sit in the back. In fact, I have more, <laughs> I, most people do like to sit in the front, I, I, but to me, if I ever go, like I go to New York to see my daughter on the bus, mm -hmm. I always sit in the back. I love the back of the bus. You like the back? I do like the back. It's The back always is laughing back there. They're always having fun. I don't know. It, not when I'm going to New yeah. York, of course, but yeah. it's just... When's your next trip coming up, though? So my next trip coming up is actually next uh, Tuesday. Uh -huh. We're leaving to go down to Atlantic City for three days. Yeah. So... Um, that's if anybody really is interested last minute and going that's on a trip. trip. That's it's a very oh. inexpensive trip because it's at the casino, but we're also going to mm -hmm. Cape May. It's only two hundred and forty nine dollars for three days and that's mm -hmm. uh twenty five dollars slot play and sixty dollars. I'm glad to hear you're not going budget. to Vegas right now. But no. that's yeah, no probably kidding. not a good idea well, right now. <laughs> and I don't usually do um, yeah. casino trips and the only reason why I'm doing mm -hmm. this is because it's a beautiful hotel right on the beach. You, you know, I tell my people, take the $25 they give you, spend that, you don't have to spend any more money. Then you just go and you have a nice vacation at the beach. And then we're gonna go one day down to Cape May, a beautiful little seaside town, Victorian houses, it's gorgeous down there. Do you keep like a scrapbook um, of pictures? Is there a photographer? Well, that that's on my Facebook page. I have all the pictures of all the that's trips good. I've ever taken. Sometimes but they keep that, um, like right in the senior center too, Marsha, like a... Uh, Oh, and go yeah. through well, you know what? We don't print out the pictures anymore. That's the problem. problem. I never print oh, out the pictures. Yeah, to yeah, see where true. people go. That yeah. would be yeah. my duty. I'd be yeah. Well, we used to do that years ago when I kind of yeah. started. We had that at I the church. I would love it. Because yeah. so many people don't, they don't have, believe it or not, access to the computer. So I always say, let's have it in holding form yes. so that you can hold it and go glance. through it. But okay. it's amazing how many more people do now. When I started yeah. doing trips, hardly anybody even had email, you know. And now, yeah. now all these seniors, even in the, even people mm. that are close to 100, have email. So it's and and when you were asking before about the age group, I mean, literally, I do have younger people. Sometimes yeah. people will bring, especially like for uh, certain shows, like the mm -hmm. Christmas show and. Regal players. I'll have five and six year old girls. You know, they're all dressed yeah. up in their fancy little party dresses. Mm -hmm. And um, but for the most part, you know, my group is probably around forty to eighty five. Yeah. You know, it's a yeah. pretty 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 well, wide range, and, know and they're younger and younger all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, more and more we're finding you know a group of younger people. There you are know, people should know about the senior centers. I know that here in Upton they call it yeah. the center. Um, <clears throat> But I think that's good because we're getting the word out more and more. It's not just if you're mm -hmm. over 50. I mean, what happens? I have a friend who you know, started getting the, uh, what is it, the AARP um, yeah, propaganda we don't, we in don't the like mail. It. We don't like when that comes <laughs> right into the right into the trash barrel. I said, no, no, no. Then we start seeing Paul McCartney on the cover, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Johnny Depp or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, like they, they are definitely, James definitely. Yeah. And it's if you go through it, you know, I remember seeing it on my parents' coffee table in yeah. their home thinking, uh, mm -hmm. uh. <laughs> But when you go through it, they know exactly what they're doing in yes, that magazine. That's right. <laughs> we got to go again. Uh, Marsha, how do people get a hold of you? Well, Gail reminded me from the sidelines, don't forget to like us on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So if you Google the Expert Senior Center, you can like us on Facebook. Yeah, Is that I'll correct, go on Gail? Facebook and just look it up. 
Oh, go on Facebook. See, she's really? so she's a generation younger, <laughs> and she's really good on Facebook. So like us on Facebook, look us up on Facebook, as well as calling us anytime, or just please walk in. We're always. We try. We strive what to be welcoming. What are your hours open, Marsha? Uh, 8 to 4, technically. I'm usually okay. there a little bit later. And your address five. again? It's 36 South Main Street. So South Main Street is 122, right, right in the heart of downtown Oxbridge, yep. across from our new fire station. Sue, so again, how do they reach you for a trip? Okay, so basically call my home phone number, which is 508-476-5820. And again, I do have a Facebook page under the Silver Club, and they're kind of connected. Sometimes uh, Marsha or yes. Gail will put things, you know, back and forth. So mm -hmm. if you go to the Oxford Senior Center, in fact, even on the Oxford Senior Center page, uh, or I should say, their um, I'm sorry, their uh, <laughs> newsletter is on, the newsletter is on the. Um, um, on the website, yeah. on That's their right. website. If That's you go to right. their they'll website, find sorry. You. They'll we, yeah. find you. It's good to have but different senior anyway. centers on. If you're watching from um, uh, anywhere else, if you want to have your senior center focused here, everybody is welcome. Uh, we have a far reach with this program. Right. Uh, we'll take somebody from Rhode Island and Connecticut. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because it gives us ideas, too. Mm -hmm. And we know what's going on with, uh, and it's now, we've, gosh, we've got Gen X coming. We've got the boomers coming. We've got... And even my parents' age into the 90s. I mean, this is fantastic. So uh, I think this is the first we've ever seen of this in in America. This people are, if you look at the obituaries, I've mentioned it before, 95. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think this is great. Thank you, ladies, for being on so much. And Gail for riding shotgun on the yes, side. They're, uh, they're wonderful outreach coordinator, and whom I've no I do when my baby was born, and, and her sons. Thank you, all three of you, for being on. Well, and if you'd like to be on us. again, let me know. We'll, we'll get it right out there. Thank you we'll so see you next much. time. I'll be my guest. Thank you. Okay.